स्टूडेंट्स आई एम श्रेया आई टीच इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड ग्लोबल टीचर्स अकेडमी वी ट्रेन स्टूडेंट्स टू क्लियर द यू जी सी नेट एग्जामिनेशन राइट सो लाइक प्रोमिस दिस इज दीव बीन कमिंग आउट विद इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एंड दिस इज द सेवन सेट इन दैट सीरीज सो दिस सेट ऑल्सो कवर्स ऑल इम्पॉर्टेंट पोर्शन ऑफ द पेपर दैट वुड बी एक्सपेक्टेड फॉर यू टू आंसर इन द एग्जामिनेशन एंड सम ऑफ दीज और मोस्ट ऑफ दीज रैदर आर फ्रॉम प्रीवियस इयर्स सो it's also important for for you when you look at the previous few questions to know the kind of authors that are being featured in the options so there is the one right answer which is fine but you also need to see what are the other authors that are mentioned okay so again this one again like i always say is from all portions uh, from the syllabus so british literature world literature right literary criticism and theory elt as well as rhetorics right so covering all major five portions of the syllabus moving on and seeing the first question now so the first question says it's a quote it says only the film which fluttered on the grate still flutters there the sole uniquet thing the above lines are quoted from is it from tintern abbe revisited is it from michael is it from frost at midnight or is it from this lime tree bower my prison right so first things first who has written these poems this what uh, age are these poems from so all these poems are from the romantic era right these two are by wordsworth william wordsworth whereas these two are by samuel taylor coleridge right uh, you know this is when he was uh, when uh, wordsworth is revisiting his place wordsworth is revisiting the place where he's had his childhood he spent his childhood and while reflecting while looking at the nature he's reflecting back upon his lifetimes or the wonderful childhood times that he spent in the area right michael again is a it's it's a ballad so again a question that could come which of these is a ballad so this michael is a ballad where he's talking about pastoral life right and through the story of a shepherd frost at midnight is by s t coleridge and in in this poem uh, coleridge is coleridge is addressing his son uh, the son's name is hartley An another important question so a lot of questions that would come from this side right romantic poems uh, the name of the poems that who's written these poems so michael is by wordsworth tintern abbey revisited is by wordsworth another important question is the uh, complete name of tintern abbey so lines written down etc it's a huge name you must know the name Frost at Midnight, written by S. T. Coleridge. Uh, it was addressed to his son. It was addressed to his son Hartley, and he wanted his child to grow in nature. He says that he's not had uh, the childhood experiences should always be in countryside, right? So he's a huge supporter of life uh, in countryside. Like he hates the city, and this is a general notion of all romantic poets only because this is an era where industrialization is. Uh, slowly and gradually building up so the town as they understood it the city as they understood is losing its charm it's becoming uh, it's becoming more uh, brick it's becoming more cemented right it's not as beautiful as it used to be versus the countryside which still retains its original beauty so the idea of growing up in countryside is also growing in nature and around nature which in turn helps you reflect back and understand your life better so coleridge here in the poem also discusses that he is also not had a very fruitful childhood because it was also not in countryside and so he hopes for his child uh, hopes for his son hartley to be a child of nature and be raised in the countryside only right so again uh, 1798 poem why i am telling you so much about this poem is because the lines are quoted from this one only so the line is from frost at midnight and the last one uh, the lime tree bower my prison so this here in this poem he is talking about uh, how he's been um, instructed to stay beneath a lime tree while all his friends have gone to explore the countryside right so this is another poem by st coleridge frost at midnight is the poem from which this these lines come from right moving on then modernism has been described as being concerned with this this enchantment of our culture with culture itself who is the critic is it stephen spender is it malcolm bradbury is it lionel trilling or is it joseph frank right so who is the uh, who's the critic who's called uh, who's who's described modernism as just disenchantment of our culture with culture itself right so there is the disenchantment there is the distancing 
right what does this line mean in the first place there is this dispensing you do not put culture at the center like you used to so the cultural symbols that were forever placed at the center have been replaced now because what is modernism modernism is the understanding that the things that you were believing in were in fact a facade right that is what modernism is about and post modernism tends to celebrate this facade right post modernism tends to celebrate the idea that okay if there is no meaning okay if there is no grand narrative i will constantly create my own narratives but what is modernism about modernism is about a nostalgia of not having a grand narrative right so it is like a disenchantment of our culture everything that we believe to be important everything that we believe to be at the center in the society has been disenchanted with what with another minor narratives okay so the critic here is lionel trilling right he's he's given the statement but it's important for you to understand what this means because this is an important insight as to what modernism itself is actually about right here uh, for modernism and understanding of post modernism leotard jaise understanding the answering the question what is post modern is important right because he is also talking about the dif- di- uh, the difference between modern and post modern and whenever i ask this in a class of students they always tell me that modern is nostalgia and post modern is celebration without understanding what these two words entail right so you need to understand why is modernism a nostalgia and how are you leading to a stage of celebration which leotard tries to answer in his essay also here it's leonel trilling who's given this statement right and this was in an essay which is called on the teaching of modern literature on the teaching of modern literature it's a good essay you must read this if you have time right so moving on where i lacked the political purpose i wrote lifeless books very very important statement by this individual and before i i don't want to give you the answer before reading the options but very important statement and important statement and important text in which this statement is coming from right so it says to which of the following authors can be can we attribute the above admission is it graham green is it george orwell is it charles morgan or is it evelyn war right so these are your a b and c uh, a b c and d options right now if you just know the kind of books that all of these people have written you know that george orwell's books are laden with political allegory right there are a lot of political symbols so your text here your text animal farm is talking about the stalin government to an extent it's, to- it's talking about how socialism can go wrong right how revolt can go wrong where there is if it's replaced by a leader who's again following a kind of government that keeps people in check and hold right and then there is the very famous 1984 right where he talks of the the big brother which is an idea that extreme surveillance extreme surveillance can lead to a lack of freedom right so both these texts very important and very laden with political allegory animal farm where napoleon is supposed to believe uh, is supposed to represent the figure of stalin right so very laden with political allegory so in it is now it's pretty clear i made it pretty clear that it's george orwell who's made the statement and here it's also important for you uh, where this is said and what is the entire context right so he wrote an essay which is called why i write right it's an important essay in 19, he's he's written this essay in 1946 right the essay obviously like the title suggests it deals with his journey as to how he's become a writer right and he in the uh, text only lists four great motives for writing so he says there are four great motives for which i write right why i write i write for four great motives i'm going to write the four motives down so that you can take this down if you want to so he says it's sheer egoism the first motive is sheer egoism right the second he says is aesthetic enthusiasm right the third one he says is historic impulse and the fourth one he says is political purpose 
and then elaborating upon political purpose and how political purpose is an important attribute or an important reason or motive for him to write he goes on to say it is invariably where i lacked the political purpose i wrote lifeless books moving on from that which is the quote already mentioned and was betrayed into purple passages sentences without meaning decorative adjectives and humbug generally right and so purple passages that's a phrase that comes after it is a, a phrase that's used by george orwell could also be a question i think it's already featured in one of the exams so remember that as well right so then moving on the next question the next question that we will discuss how does lord jim end right so lord jim text by joseph conrad 1900 text remember the date it's easy right uh, so how does lord jim end does it end a jim is shot through the chest by doraman does it end b jim kills himself with the last unflinching glance C Jim answers the call of exalted egoism and betrays Jewel or D Jim surrenders himself to Doraemon right important text text by Joseph Conrad popular for Heart of Darkness right important text again need to go through the summary Lord Jim and the Heart of Darkness are the two texts that you must look in detail for Conrad right so little bit about the story here uh, in, towards the end of the novel it's uh, jim arrives at doramin's place right and he tells the old man that he is um, unarmed and he's very sorry right but then doramin doesn't listen to him and he shoots him through the heart right so because the question because the questions are have been of such nature where they ask you minute details like i remember for ipsen's doll house they asked uh, what were in her pockets right so because they ask you detailed questions so a question could also be that it was actually uh, he was a uh, jim was thro uh, jim, uh, jim was shot through the heart right so the answer here is a moving on to the next question question says in pinter's birthday party stanley is given a birthday present what is it is it a a toy b a piano c a drum d a violin so like i was discussing what is in uh, the pocket is it's a similar question but however the uh, because the text is harold pinter's birthday party the the symbol of the birthday present is important in the text and you must read the summary of the text so uh, this text is important and the symbol in the text of the birthday present is important right so the the birthday present is a drum and i'll tell you why is it important uh, a little bit about the text first birthday party harold pinter right uh, absurd theater very important uh, very important person associated with absurd theater along with beckett right because the plays tend, tend to get haywire you don't tend to exactly follow the sequence of events and that's the beauty right this is the beauty of existentialism you don't really understand the sequence of events and then yet it makes meaning the kind of meaning that you want it to make for yourself right so there is no one meaning but it's the kind of meaning that you want the text to make for yourself so birthday party text right so the uh, present uh, is brought by lulu is a character again and is presented to stanley uh, is presented uh, uh, to stanley through meg right so meg presents it lulu gets it what is the uh, present the present is a drum right and uh, as soon as stanley gets the gift stanley start uh, unwraps it and uh, starts playing the drum but it is through uh, constantly playing the drum that stanley almost starts banging it harder and harder and harder and it becomes like he's possessed but you don't understand why right so that's the symbol of the drum in the text and it's an important symbol so the answer here is the drum moving on the narrator of pyer's plowman falls asleep on a is it the mendip hills b is it the purbeck hills c is it the malvern hills or d is it the shevio hills right so again 
pious plowman it's a allegory an allegory that is laden with a lot of theological references right whose text william langland's text right laden with uh, uh, laden with a lot of theological uh, allegory right it's an allegory so where does the narrator fall asleep the question asks you that so the narrator falls asleep on the malvern hills it's his journey towards the truth the ultimate truth right and this is the uh, like the first hurdle there are a lot of hurdles that you will see in the text so i'll suggest you to go through a summary and i remember doing it through a chart that was available online so try and find that chart where it's, it's almost like this place is for known for this so this is here he slept here he is trying uh, he here he is crossing the river etc etc because there have been questions like this right and the later part of the uh, the later part of the narrative uh, talks of narrator narrator search for do well do bet do best so do well do better do best right so search for ultimate truth so malvern hills is the place where the narrator sleeps moving on next question robert buchanan a minor poet critic and novelist took sides in the literary squabbles of 1860s against swinburne and the rossettis he wrote a review which introduced the term is it the a is it a the earthly school of poetry is it b the fleshly, uh, fleshly school of poetry is it c the stealthy school of poetry or is it d the esoteric school of poetry right so this is your question now uh, rossetti daniel gabriel rossetti and swinburne so these people started the pre raphaelite group right where they were questioning all the existing norms of art and they were trying to go back into the original form of art did not uh, did not uh, trivialize any object uh, focused on all objects as equal so they were not only painting the great objects it it started with art it started with visual arts and went on to poetry right so did not focus on any uh, great matter or for instance the topic did not have to be the subject did not have to be very grand even in the trivial uh, they focused even on the trivial and believed that the trivial also is beautiful right so this is the pre raphaelite group that was uh, we've done a question on pre raphaelite there is usually a question on pre raphaelites right so these are the pre raphaelite group now uh, buchanan has uh, his critiqued these right so he's critiqued them in an essay called the he's called uh, the essay the they they called the the fleshly school of poetry right because the focus he says is too much on the body the focus is he says is too much on um, like sensuality and extreme sensuality the kind that would that 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 doesn't focus on the greater learnings of life and only focuses on the exquisite sexuality right so he says that and the uh, essay appeared uh, in a in a review called the contemporary review it's a journal where the essay appeared it's called the fleshly school of poetry which is the name of the essay and it appeared in the contemporary review where he critiqued the pre raphaelite poets as someone who focused too much on sensuality someone who focused too much on the body rather than paying focus to the higher pleasures of life to higher pleasures of mind instead the the focus is on bodily pleasures right now both rossetti and swinburne replied so rossetti replied through uh, by writing an essay which is called the stealthy school of poetry right so this was his response to buchanan's fleshly school of poetry right important question right now then uh, swinburne also replied and he replied in a pamphlet which is known as under the microscope right it's a rich question rich question why who are these who are the people who uh, who are the people who are being critiqued what group do they belong to right they belong to the pre raphaelite group what are the uh, features of a pre uh, features that the pre raphaelite group represent right then the critique what was the name of the critique what was the crit criticism saying right what was the response so what was the response of rossetti what was the response of swinburne right so all these questions are important your answer here is the fleshly school of poetry moving on to the next question an extremely simplified form of language 
used as contact language among speakers of different languages is a is it a dialect is it b a creole is it c a pidgin or is it d a register right so four types and four different aspects of languages are given important for you creole and pidgin have constantly been asked in the exam again important for you is to know what dialect and register are also are right so pidgin is the basic mode of communication the most basic right so for instance i'll give you an example if you're a trader if you're a trader who lives in say up right and you're traveling to kerala for uh for you're a trader and you're traveling to kerala for work but you've no idea about the language right and no, you both the people who your uh, the ones that you're trading with do not have a common language in which they can talk right so you both of you because you have to constantly trade will reach a language or a point in language where you start to understand some of their words and they start to understand some of your words right so pidgin is a basic mode of communication right it's a contact language of speakers among different language where for easing communication for communicating things you've created a basic mode so that you can understand each other's things right now creole is generally a transition uh, it's a it's a transition from pidgin to a full fledged language right so it's a transition from pidgin and how do you know when a pidgin becomes a creole so when a creole as is being picked up by a generation as their first language so when children are born and they take this language the the language that they picked up as the first language it becomes a creole right so it's a gen, uh, it's a uh, transaction it's a transition of pidgin to creole right so pidgin is a mode of communication right whereas creole is language becoming the i right then language becomes you till pidgin it's a basic mode of communication but as you move from pidgin to creole the language becomes the i the language becomes a part of your identity okay so the answer here obviously is pidgin because it's a uh, simplified form of language and used by speakers for contact it's a contact language then again you must know what dialect and register are there is a distinction that is often made so dialect is when your language changes according to specific regions or specific so social conditions but whereas register is when your language is associated with situations right so your language when changes according to the kind of audience that you are um, addressing when it changes to that then it's a register dialect is when it's constantly changing due to uh, social environment and the social structure or the uh, the society or the region that you're present in right so your answer here is pidgin but pidgin the difference between pidgin and creole is important and the difference between the register and dialect is important right moving on to the next question why can't we be friends now it's what i want it's what you want but the horses didn't want it they severed apart the earth didn't want it at at the end of a passage to india foster suggests that a if fielding and aziz want they can be friends b probably if the indians and the english want they can still be friends c through fielding and aziz want though though fielding and aziz want the horses and the earth of india do not want the english and the indians to be friend friends not yet d the east is east and the west is west and the twain shall never meet right important text very important text in fact passage to india 1924 by em foster right so what does the story generally about so the story revolves around two character dr aziz is friends with fielding and there are two females that come from england to india now adela while they are visiting uh, barabar caves which is uh, malabar caves which is from barabar caves in bihar which we've already done in a question uh, when they are visiting the caves uh, adela feels that uh, it's probably she, she feels something in the cave and she probably feels that it is dr aziz who's responsible right and then she uh, tells people that it was dr aziz and dr aziz is held for a trial for um, held for a trial for the assault right and so there is a kind of and he's not done it right so there is a kind of a distance that develops between dr aziz and all the friends that he's made who are english right because then he is he's, he's able to clearly see that indians for english will always remain criminals right and then the distance develops so and it's a popular last line right it's a popular uh, last line that comes here he says that 
and uh, doctor is is not convicted of the crime right so he's not uh, he's not the one who's convicted of the crime and adela also later realizes that he was not doc- it was not the person who who done something to her in the cave who sort of assaulted her was not doctor resigns right so he is not uh, but there is the realization that there is still time for the indian and english to be friends and that what that's what the essay says uh, that's what the line say why can't we be friends now it's what i want it's what you want so one individual or the other individual could want it but the situation the situation that when in a cave a female feels assaulted it's going to be a, a, a british female feels assaulted it's going to be an indian who's done it right so the answer here is c that though fielding and aziz want the horses and the earth of india do not want the england uh, do not want the english and the indians to be friends not yet right so like like i say always we are going to post more videos if you like the video if you think that it was useful follow the channel right subscribe to it so that you can see more videos like that which we are going to regularly post thank you